All right, I was wrong about Moritz Seider. I was wrong about him in his draft year, in his draft plus one, and I was wrong as recently as last winter. I'm here today to atone for my sins. Sider with a drive, he scores! A puck on net for two oh. and a half. Oh! Big hit by Sider. Big time. Back to Suter. Flipped it deep. Sider, oh, scores! scores! What a shot! Oh my Red Wings win it for the prey! Honestly, Sider's great at everything. But let's start with the breakouts. That's where he's improved the most. Some of these plays are impressive for a veteran top pairing defenseman. Sider is a 20 year old rookie. These little plays help start Detroit's offense in a controlled manner. He's already one of the league's best at delaying to beat four checking pressure and then starting the rush up the ice. And he's not shy to try a move. But Sider wasn't doing this before, not even during his SHL Defenseman of the Year winning 2021 season. This is him in December last year. Pressure comes from the side, he hammers the puck up the boards and out. Similar situation in the NHL, but on his offside. He spins away from pressure to delay and then goes back to his defensive partner, no turnover. Back in Sweden, as soon as pressure arrived behind the net, he threw the puck up the boards without much foresight. In Detroit, he turns his back to pressure to protect the puck, delays, and then hits the open teammate. This is two fantastic reads in a single sequence. He mostly avoided using the middle when pressured, fixating on moving play up the boards. Now he uses the middle as much as possible. Many of his breakout plays are reserved for the top 15 or 20 or so breakout artists in the NHL, and he's already doing them without issue. Here, Sider scans to see pressure incoming from the back and side, as well as a teammate on the inside lane. He looks away and waits. Just as the four checker coming from the side moves his stick out of the lane, Sider passes through it to hit his target. The delay and deception drew two four checkers towards him, meaning that his recipient has additional time and space to make the next play. I don't have the explanation for Sider's improvement, but I have a theory. This is a combination of Sider's tools, intelligence, and willingness to improve, and Detroit's player development and coaching. Going back to the SHL, Sider clearly had the tools and sometimes the ideas. This isn't perfect, but he sees incoming pressure from both the side and the front, so he goes cross ice. That became increasingly common throughout that season. His retrievals, where many breakouts begin, were always a strength, shoulder checking and establishing body positioning, but they were more to set up short passes or clearances rather than skilled breakouts. And there were even flashes of the delay game that makes his breakout so special now. Perhaps as Detroit's development staff, Dan Cleary, Sean Horkoff, and previously Brandon Narato, helped Sider improve his handling and reads, these occasional ideas became key parts of his game. Add mechanical improvements to a player who always wanted to activate, create, and shows a clear desire to improve, and combine that with Detroit's structure, one of activation, movement, and defenseman making skilled plays, and you have the perfect recipe for player development. That improvement continues, and it's visible in real time. The short play doesn't work out. He probably should have just gone to the middle, but he gets the puck back, scans over the opposite shoulder to identify options and threats, he turns his toes to show the incoming four checker that he's going behind the net. They take the bait, he cuts back, scans again, and starts the breakout. These same details and skills translate to Sider's play in the neutral zone. He's deceptive, regularly faking the pass to the outside to turn the four checker's feet before hitting a teammate up the middle. Even if running out of space seems inevitable, he tries to create something. And of course, there are moments of incredible skill that he hasn't previously done. Kopitar, oh. Sider dangles oh. twice through neutral ice, gains the Kings line. Historically, much of his offensive value came from pinches, activating to prevent a clearance and extend offensive zone time. It also came from early play killing, sometimes in the offensive zone, but usually between the blue lines to get his teammates attacking quickly. That's starting to change. Sider took big steps as a playmaker last year, which have continued in the NHL. After starting the breakout, he joins the play, gets the puck in shooting position, and instead passes for what would have been an even better chance. He goes zone entry to short support to become an easy passing option, 
and then sends a dart cross ice for another chance. His anticipation on the defensive end gets him up the ice, and here he drops the puck back and finishes his off puck route for, well, it happens. He even connects with the odd look off pass from the point and his shot pass is one of Detroit's better power play weapons. His activation from the point continues to improve too. Most players hang out along the boards here, Sider steps inside to become an easy to hit threat. As Detroit continues to improve, his more advanced activations like this give and go to the inside will be rewarded. The next steps for Sider are continuing his mechanical improvement while tightening up his reads. He still gets locked into shooting sometimes, if he makes the early pass to his partner it opens up Detroit's offense and he takes too many pucks flat-footed. If he moves while receiving the puck, perhaps the pass becomes an option here. What isn't surprising about Sider's success is defense. He's long been one of the most impressive defenders in the prospect world, but that he already scores top 30 in Evolving Hockey's expected defensive impact is extremely impressive. Simply put, when Sider is on the ice, there are no mo problems. When defending the rush, he takes the middle early, forcing the attacker to take the outside. As they commit to the boards, Sider closes in for the kill. Concede the zone? No problem. He keeps a tight gap and doesn't overextend. This is a great example of defensive timing. He gets the stop just as the pass comes in. That timing translates to the D zone as well. And he doesn't just defend the cycle, he demolishes it. After angling this attack up the boards, he stays engaged but doesn't chase, he doesn't react to the attacker's tricks, and then he kills the play. He's just so nasty to play against, he's rarely overpowered in puck battles. After getting stops, he makes sure his man has no chance of recovering. He just runs through people like they're not even there, it's crazy. And good luck trying to get one back on him. This isn't even every part of Sider's game. He's a powerful shooter, an impressive penalty killer, a key part of Detroit's power play, a pest, and a 3v3 wizard. Everything suggests that he's well on his way to become a top defenseman in the NHL, whether that's the stats or the tape, the flashy plays, or the mundane. Enjoy the Calder discussions for now. We're going to be talking to Norris soon enough. He's already Detroit's number one, overtaking Philip Pronick in ice time per game a few weeks back. This is more Sider's blue line now, ahead of schedule, better than expected, and still improving. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and then head to eprinkside.com.